Hey guys, it's Dr. Jay Rutland. Welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I wanna tell you guys today, what we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about the top three reasons as to why I chose pulmonary medicine. All right? You guys all know, and look, there's emotional attachment to pulmonary. But that's not the reason that I chose pulmonary. My emotional attachment is my grandparents had lung disease. That's the emotional attachment. So of course, there's a soft spot for pulmonary there, but that can't be the reason that I selected it. So why did I select pulmonary and critical care medicine? Here is why. Number one, imaging. When I was a medical student, I loved imaging. I loved everything about imaging. I loved the objective information that you collected with imaging. I loved being able to interpret a chest x-ray or a chest CT and being able to take it back to the patient clinically. I loved it when my attending would pimp me on imaging because it was like a coloring book. I could look at the image and I could see things or not see things. And then I can tell my attending, hey, this is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm not seeing. And this is what it means. So imaging to me was extremely important in the specialty that I was going to select. So that's number one. Number two, interventions. I love intervention. I love doing procedures. I love doing small little surgeries, okay? For me, anything in which you're being somewhat invasive in a patient is a little bit of a surgery. So for me, interventions was number two. What interventions am I talking about? Well, there's interventions in the pulmonary side or on the pulmonary side, and there's interventions on the critical care side. What type of interventions am I talking about? Well, let's talk about the most common thing that a pulmonary critical care doctor probably does, which is besides evaluating patients at the bedside, a bronchoscopy. What's a bronchoscopy? A bronchoscopy is a video scope, very similar to a colonoscopy, where we take a small camera that's linked to a large tube, we go through your mouth, through your voice box, into your lungs, and we look and see what we can see inside the lungs. Whether there is a cancer present, whether there's mucus present, whether there's other lesions present that we need to biopsy and or treat. So interventions to me are important. Interventions on the critical care side are things like endotracheal intubation. What's that? Fancy way of saying tube through your vocal cords so we can support your breathing. This is for people who can't breathe well, and it's also for people who don't breathe because of their mental status. Another procedure in the ICU is called the chest tube. It's where we slice a little piece of skin on the side of somebody's chest and place a tube into their pleural space, that space between the lung and the chest wall. So again, for me, every day can be different because of the presence of interventions and the presence of patient evaluations. All right, the third reason, my third reason for selecting pulmonary and critical care medicine. When I was a boy, when I was a little kid, when I thought of doctor, I thought of someone who can help anyone in any situation. So for me, being a pulmonary and critical care physician and understanding that if a patient were to go down on a plane, in the grocery store, in the street, I know that I can get out of my car or get out of my seat and I can evaluate the patient clinically and I can probably help them. That for me was extremely important. So listen, these are my top three reasons for becoming a pulmonary and critical care physician. I hope you enjoyed them. If they're your top three reasons, let me know, comment below, comment on my Instagram page, comment on my YouTube page, comment wherever you'd like. But I wanted you guys to get to know me better and understand why I chose becoming a pulmonary and critical care physician. Thanks for joining us on Medicine Deconstructed. Please comments and feedback. We'll see you next time.